example, 350C says, where does trips and cleave? And there's like so much stuff that I don't know where to. So for example, let's figure out where chyma trips and cleave here. Right. Well, this amino acid here is phenylalanine. You would look it up and you'd see it's phenylalanine. Okay. And if you look up in the table, you see that chymotrypsin cleaves on the carboxy side of phenylalanine. So you have to decide, is it going to cleave this bond on the left or this bond on the right? Wait, where are we? Which problem? Uh, a problem I just made up on the board. Oh, so I just made great. up this problem right. on the board. Okay. So let's say that we have this side chain of phenylalanine. Okay. And we want to know which, we know that chymotrypsin cleaves phenylalanine bonds. If you look at your table, you'll see that chymotrypsin cleaves phenylalanine bonds. And I think the question that one of you was asking is, which, which bond is it going to cleave? Is it going to cleave this bond on the right or this bond on the left? That bond on the left. I'm sorry, on the right? Because it's the carboxy side. Right? Yeah, that's right. Remember that the, uh, it cleaves on the carboxy side. Well, this is the carboxy side, not this one. But I think what I also get confused about is like it's always the amide bond that it's going to that's true. Yeah. One second. So the because carboxy side is this this side, right? It's the side with the carboxy carbon. So it's the one connected directly to the amide. Okay. Well, there's an amide over here as well. But how do we know this is the carboxy side? Well, this is the side with the carboxy carbon. Right? This is the carboxy. Do you agree okay. this is in the relation, carboxy carbon? Okay, so in relation to that phenyl thing. That's right. Now this carboxy carbon is for a different amino acid, right? This is the, so let's say that this is alanine. This is the carboxy carbon for this alanine. Right. But this is the carboxy carbon for this phenylalanine. Right, because it would be too far to the left if we... The carboxy carbon, this is why, so uh, I hope that you guys have been following my advice and labeling all the alpha carbons. Then it makes it very easy to find the carboxy carbon because that's attached to the alpha carbon. So the carboxy carbon here for the phenylalanine must be the carbon that's attached to the phenylalanine's alpha carbon. Great, thank you. So, so what did we decide? It was going to cleave over here on the carboxy side. Yeah, so the kind of trips it would cleave this bond because this is the carboxy side. Does it make sense? It makes sense. So it's the carboxy side because we're looking in relation from that R group, that phenyl R group. We want the carboxy side of this amino acid. That's right. Clearly, this is not the carboxy in this amino acid, right? Right. Because it's not attached to this alpha carbon. Do you see how labeling the alpha carbon makes it so much easier to see what the right carboxy carbon is? Yes. It's the carbon that's attached. Great. Like I say, I hope that you guys have been labeling the alpha carbons on every problem that you've been doing. It really makes it a lot easier. The, so what's the, what's the uh, amino end? It's the nitrogen attached to the alpha carbon. And what's the carboxy end? Right. It's the so carbon attached to the alpha carbon. If we were looking at the amino end, we would do that. We would put that squiggly. This is the amino end for the phenylalanine. So That's right. right. Where would we put the one? Mm -hmm. If we were cleaving the amino end, we would cleave this. Now we're always cleaving the peptide bonds. What what type of linkage is there between amino acids? Peptide bonds. So if we cleave amino acids, we're always cleaving peptide bonds. I don't understand why the amino end wouldn't be. For phenylalanine. No, I know it doesn't apply, but let's say it did apply, why it wouldn't be the... This thing? one here? No. The one to the right of NH. This one here? Yeah. Ah. Well, so you're saying why don't we cleave this bond? Yeah. Well, we're going to cleave the linkage between the amino acids. We're going to cleave the linkage between the amino acids. But what is the linkage between the amino acids? It's an amide linkage. All the amino acids are connected by amide bonds. Anytime we're, cut, we're cleaving a bond, anytime we're cleaving two amino acids, we're always cleaving an amide bond. Anytime we're cleaving an amino acid from another one, we're always cleaving an amide bond because that's the linkage. There's just no reason to ever expect that this bond would break. Why would we think that this bond would break? This is just a normal nitrogen-carbon bond. There's no particular reason for that to break. But we know that these bonds can definitely break because this is an amide, and we know that this is a good leaving group as a carboxylic acid derivative. But I see that cut as being the same as, so that cut is like a cut for that other molecule. It's like the same thing, isn't it? The cut that, you, the last cut you just made is an, that this one? amide bond. Okay, let me just draw it. So, here. So we were saying about, mm -hmm. you 
just a cut here, right? Right. So this is a cut, this is an amino cut for this. An amide cut. Oh, I see. That, okay, yeah. So this is cutting on the amino end. That's right. For this. But right. it also for this molecule, it would be... It would be cutting on the carboxy end of that amino acid. This bond is on the amino side of this amino acid, and it's on the carboxy side of this amino acid. Right? Right. Oh, right, because the whole point is we want to keep the molecule together. We you just want to, keep want to the cut it from everything together. else. Right. Okay, so we're just cutting always between the amino acids. We just need to be careful which ones we're cutting. So every, if an amino acid is internal, it has two amide bonds. The amide bond with the left hand and the amide bond on the right hand. And you just have to decide which of those two you're cutting. Well, if you're cutting the amino side, you'd be cutting the left-hand one. And if you're cutting the carboxy side, you'd be cutting the right-hand.